The Ultimate Factoring Series, Lesson Number 3, The Difference of Cubes. Similar to the difference of squares, difference means subtraction, so we're subtracting the two terms. And cubes mean there's two terms that are being cubed, or we have two perfect cubes. This formula is a little more complicated than difference of squares, admittedly. But every time a cubed minus b cubed can be factored into a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. There's a rhyme that can help you remember this a little bit. So if we call a, not a cubed, but if we call a the first one, if we call b, again not b cubed, just b, second one, then we can remember this formula like this. First one, second one, first one squared, first one times the second one, second one squared. The first sign is the same, the second one is not. The last one's always positive, and that's what you got. First one, second one, first one squared, first one times the second one, last one squared. The first sign's the same, the second one's not. The last one's always positive, and that's what you've got. So let's try to remember that as we start some examples. Actually, before we do examples, let's look at some perfect cubes just so we know what to look out for. One cubed is one, two cubed is eight, three cubed is 27, four cubed is 64, five cubed is 125, and you can keep going up from there if you wish. Looking at the second line there, we see variables that are being raised to exponents that are multiples of three x cubed, x to the 6, x to the ninth. you can keep going up from there, y cubed, y to the 6, y to the ninth. Again, you're looking for any exponent that is divisible by 3. And then the last line shows you the combination of some numbers and variables that are both perfect cubes, whether that be 8, x to the 6th, 64, y to the ninth, 125, x cubed, y to the 6th. Each term or each piece of each term has to be perfect cubed. So 8 has to be perfect cubed and x to the 6, which they both are. 64 has to be 1 and y to the 9th has to be 1. 125, x cubed and y to the 6 have to be 1. So just to give you an example, if we had 25 x cubed, this would not be a perfect cubed. While this one, the x cubed, is a perfect cubed, the 25 is not a perfect cube. So this overall then would not be a perfect cube. So our first example, we have x cubed minus 8. So first I need to identify the things that are being cubed. Obviously x is being cubed, that part's simple. And then we need to think what number is being cubed to give us 8. Another way you could view it is what is the cube root of 8? Well that is 2. So when you see x cubed minus 8, what's really happening is x cubed minus 2 cubed. And we have a difference of cubed. Again, the difference means we're subtracting. Well, you have to just remember that the first set of parentheses will have two terms, and the second set of parentheses will have three terms. So I know it's going to be a binomial times a trinomial. So if I call x the first one, again, that's just x, and I call 2 the second one, then I can use my rhyme. First one, second one, first one squared, first one times the second one, so that's x times 2, or 2x, two second one squared, 2 squared is 4. The first sign is the same, same as what we started with, the second one is not, the last one's always positive, and that's what you've got. First one, second one, first one squared, first one times the second one, second one squared. The first sign's the same, the second one's not. The last one's always positive, so that's what you've got. Next example, we have one minus y cubed. So we need to start by figuring out what is being cubed. One 
cubed is 1. So 1 cubed. And then obviously y is also being cubed. So this time my 1 is the first one and my y is the second one. So I'll set this up binomial times trinomial. First one, second one, first one squared. One squared is just one. First one times the second one, one times y. Second one squared. The first sign is the same, the second one is not, the last one's always positive, and that's what you've got. If you want to check these, you actually can by doing lots of multiplying and simplifying. But you can multiply every term in the first set of parentheses times every term in the second set of parentheses. And then combine all your like terms and you should get what you started with back, 1 minus y cubed. I'm not going to take the time to do that right now during this video. But just know that just like other factoring problems, you can check by multiplying it back out. Right, now we have 8x cubed minus y to the sixth. So we need to think what is being cubed. So what's the cube root of 8? Well, that would be 2. And what's the cube root of x cubed? Just x. So that whole thing is being cubed. It's really 2x times 2x times 2x. Okay, and then y to the sixth. What's being cubed there? Well, the cube root of y to the sixth will be y squared. If it helps, just think about it as dividing the exponent by 3. So this time my first one is 2x and my second one is y squared. Now this one I'm probably going to do in two steps and you'll see what I mean in a second. Um, but it's not always easy to simplify in your head as you're going. So I'm going to do this one in two steps. The first one second one, first one squared, first one times the second one, second one squared. The first sign is the same, the second one is not, the last one's always positive, so that's what you've got. So you can see I didn't simplify right away, so I'm going to fix that now. My first set of parentheses is fine. 2x minus y squared. But I need to square the 2x. So make sure you square both pieces because squared means times itself. So that's 2x times 2x, which is going to give me 4x squared. I have to square both the 2 and the x. And then 2x times y squared, that's just 2xy squared. And then y squared squared would be y to the fourth. And this would be my final answer. Okay, final example, x to the 15th minus 64 times z to the 6th. So I need to figure out what's being cubed. So the cube root of x to the 15th would be x to the 5th. Again, you can think about it as just dividing the exponent by 3. The cube root of 64 is 4. And the cube root of z to the sixth is z squared. So my first one is x to the fifth. My second one is 4z squared. This is another one that I'm going to probably do in two steps, so I don't have to do all the simplifying in my head. First one, second one. First one squared. First one times the second one. Second one squared. The first sign is the same. The second one is not. The last one's always positive, so that's what you've got. My first set of parentheses is fine x to the fifth minus 4z squared x to the fifth squared will be x to the tenth. You multiply those two exponents together. 
then we have x to the fifth times 4z squared. So 4x to the fifth z squared would be the way to write that normally. And finally, 4z squared squared. You have to square both the 4 and the z squared. So it'll be 16z to the fourth. Now, unlike squares, where you can only do the difference, with cubes, you can do both the difference and the sum. And if you look at the next lesson in this video series, you will see the sum of cubes.